welcome to the course on energy conversion tool previously this course was named as electrical machines tool later on the course title was changed to energy conversion tool however the course contents remain same for the both course title let us start the course before i start this energy conversion tool course let me discuss about the prerequisite courses to continue with this energy conversion to course first of all you need to have basic ideas on electrical circuit analysis so electrical circuit analysis both ac and dc i hope this subject has been covered during your first year course next you need to have basic idea on electronics 1 and 2 so electronics 1 and 2 1 and 2 so these two courses were covered in your second and third semester i think then you need to have very good idea on energy conversion 1 energy conversion one which was previously named as electrical machines one electrical machines one so while continuing with this course energy conversion two course i'll pre-assume that you have fair idea on the subjects mentioned here on the and especially the topics that were covered in these courses in energy conversion one you covered most of the dc machines like dc motors dc generators transformers actually this energy conversion two is the continuation of this course energy conversion one now let us discuss about the content to be covered in energy conversion two so if in energy conversion two the contents that are to be covered first of all we'll cover induction motor induction motor before i start this induction motor things i'll give you the basic idea on the basic principles of ac, AC machines in induction motor we'll cover three phase induction motor three phase induction motor if i abbreviate induction motor as i am so three phase induction motor which can be written as three phase induction motor also will cover single phase single phase induction motor that is single phase i am which is the short form of single phase induction motor next we'll cover that is synchronous motor synchronous motor then we'll cover synchronous generator synchronous generator generator the synchronous generator also named as alternators alternators finally we will cover special types of motors special types of motors now these topics Will be covered especially the induction motor parts and the basic ideas on AC machine things will be covered before mid semester exam before mid exam and this synchronous motor parts and special types of motors parts will be covered after mid Exactly.
So this is the complete syllabus we are going to cover induction motor, three phase, single phase, synchronous motor that will uh, that is definitely three phase synchronous generator or which is named as alternators as well and special types of motors. Next the books that we are going to follow let me separate this part so books we have textbooks and supporting books the textbook that is going to be followed for this course is electric machinery fundamentals by Stephen Chapman this is the main book next the supporting book for this course is electrical machines drives and power systems electrical machines drives and power systems this book is written by Theodore Wilde another book which will act as supporting book for this course is a textbook of electrical technology volume 2 this book is written by B. L. Thereja and A. A. actually most of the topics will be covered from this textbook also some topics will be covered from this supporting books i want all of you to have these books in your collections now let us get started with the very first content of energy conversion 2 course we'll start our topic with ac machines fundamentals and we'll review the basic concept on magnetic field due to a current carrying wire suppose we have a wire that is carrying current for example this is a wire and a current is flowing through this wire when we say current is flowing through this wire that means the circuit is filled for example th this is how the circuit is filled we have a resistance for limiting the current a source so let me draw it in solid lines and this is how the circuit is filled when current is flowing through this wire so what will happen there will be a creation of magnetic field and the magnetic field will have a circular shape so there will be a magnetic field produced like this type of circle and this magnetic field is being produced due to this current flowing we all know that from our previous physics knowledge now what will be the direction of this magnetic field that can be found out by ampere's right hand grip rule what does it say it says if we consider our right hand and place the grip in this formation the thumb is considered to be the direction of current flowing so the magnetic field will have the direction pointed by the other fingers so here the direction of magnetic field will be like this like this so if we plot all the magnetic field lines here we will have infinite number of magnetic field starting from near to the current carrying wire to infinite distance now what is the magnitude of this magnetic field we know from our previous physics knowledge that this b is equal to mu 
i divided by twice phi r where r is the radius of this magnetic field line from the where so r is the radius this is r r is the radius of this magnetic field line from the where if r gets bigger so we'll have a bigger circle and if r gets bigger the magnitude of b is reduced it is natural that if you go far distance from this where then the magnitude of b will get decreased now being in the same point if you want to increase the magnitude of b what you need to do you need to increase the value of current either by increasing the voltage source or by reducing this resistance value if you can increase the current the magnitude of current so this value will be increased and eventually the value of b will be increased and what what is mu mu is the permeability of the material where the wire is situated and i hope you know this term the value of mu differs for uh, different types of materials for a uh, year it has a certain constant value for other materials it has different different values so while solving different problems we will put the corresponding values for finding out this b now if we place our wires in a different shape in a formation of coil then that will look like this it's like something like a coil and give the same supply from here and we have a switch for example and when the switch is on what will happen some current will be flowing will have a better look if I draw in this fashion suppose we have a material here and we are making a coil using that current carrying wire so finally what will happen we have a resistance for limiting the current a source and a switch when the switch is connected so suppose this source is having voltage v this is r and a current that is flowing through this wire is i so this current will flow through this line through this line and going in inside the paper and coming outside the paper so in this way it's the currents are flowing if I take the cross-sectional view of this uh, solenoid, so how the thing will look like? If I take the cross-sectional view, the thing will look like this. We have a well and that is going in. And from here, it's coming out. Currents are going in for these cases, and currents are coming out for these cases. We may have one extra here. So, what will happen? Everywhere will produce a magnetic field. We, if we apply this rule, then we'll get as it is as the current is going in, so the magnetic field that will be produced here. Is, will have this type of shape so and this type of direction will have a lot of magnetic fields and magnetic field produced due to this will have this direction and this direction here will have this direction and here will have opposite direction in this way we can plot all the magnetic field lines for each wires so what will happen oh, well let me draw the magnetic field due to this current this current is coming out so the thumb is upward so the direction will be like this like this and here as well the direction will be like this
now how the field lines will look like combinedly if we add all the vectors in each point so we can see in these lines the vectors are having the same magnitude but in the opposite direction so they will cancel each other so fine and here we can see they are in the same direction so they will be added and we have another magnetic field due to these blue lines and they are also in the same direction so after adding all the vectors in each point we'll get is lines something like this if you add all the vectors that means vector of the magnetic field produced by each portion of the wire and combinedly if you add all the vector diagrams so they will be looking like this and finally we'll have a strong magnetic field in the center and if we add all the magnetic fields we'll get a magnetic field like this and in this way if we keep adding keep adding so this will go something like this way so we'll have another magnetic field similar to that pattern here as well in this way it will come back to here so ultimately what's happening here we are getting a magnetic field i have plotted the 2d view it's also true for 3d view that means uh, it a, a magnetic field will start from here and it will come out of the paper and it will go to other side and it will end here so in three dimensional if you consider the three dimensional view the magnetic field is in every side so we are considering only the cross sectional view of this side we can consider the cross-sectional view of other side so ultimately we'll get a magnetic field lines like this which means that it has been converted to our conventional magnet where we have a north pole here and the south pole here from north pole the field comes out and and south pole the field goes in in this way we express our magnetic field lines this is how we can convert its a current carrying wire to a static magnet and this formation is named as solenoid solenoid later on faraday made an experiment using this solenoid what did he do he said that well if a current carrying coil produce a magnetic field static magnetic field then a magnetic field will also produce a current so what he did he took a current carrying coil like this and placed a galvanometer for measuring the voltage or change in uh, voltage or emf and place a magnet here after placing a magnet he found nothing happened when the magnet is kept static here in this place and uh, there is no movement though we have field lines coming out from this magnet it's affecting this solenoid but there is no change in galvanometer nothing happens so he removed this magnet while removing this magnet he observed a phenomenon that there is a deflection in the galvanometer again he placed the magnet and placed it for a while nothing happens then again he removed the magnet while removing he saw some deflection again while bringing the magnet near to this coil he saw another deflection but if he keeps his he keeps the magnet static there is no change in the galvanometer so he came to a decision that well if there is a change in magnetic field the change in magnetic field near to this where it produces an emf eventually if the circuit is filled that produces some current through this where so field is induced 
and this magnetic field change in magnetic field is producing an electromotive force and that is known as electromagnetic induction which was given by Faraday's laws of induction I hope all of you know the about this so if we can have a changing magnetic field suppose we have a wire and the circuit is filled in this direction if we can have a change in magnetic field beside this wire we have north pole here and south pole here so fields are coming from north to south if we can have change in magnetic field this around this or near to this wire so this wire will have an electromotive force eventually if the circuit is filled there will be a current flowing how the current will behave or what will be the direction of the current that will be discussed in the next class we'll continue in the next class from here